Welcome back to the Advices Radio and Video Series. I'm Scott McNally, and with me today is Tommy Stiles. Thanks for being with me, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Scott. How's it going? It's going really good. So uh, we are both doing a contest on the same day, I believe. This is uh, October 21st. You're going to be here in Michigan doing Central States, correct? That's right. About six and a half weeks out tomorrow, so it's getting down there. How you feeling? I feel good. Yeah. Um, started to do a little carb cycling. Starting to work a little bit harder. Definitely starting to feel a little bit of suffering, which that's the part of the process that I love. So yeah. it's it's enjoyable, actually. Yeah, for a while, at least. Right. <laughs> yep. Um, and we all know your coach here at Advices. That's uh, that's Bill Warroom Toko, correct? Yes, sir. Got to give a shout out to Bill. He's pulling all the strings. I just execute. So right on, man. It's nice to be able to do that, isn't it? To to be able to have a coach to trust, and uh, yep. you could just kind just, of follow the plan, right? Just listen and apply. That's all you have to do. I like that. So uh, you know, the reason I wanted to bring Tommy on today was to talk about training. Um, you know, I met Tommy, I believe, more than a year ago now. But I've seen you in the last year make some really nice improvements. Um, and specifically, you've made some really nice gains to your back. I wanted to talk to you about back training. And so Tommy shot some video for us. Back that we... You know, you, you've got some footage here of your, your, your pre-workout uh, uh, nutrition. Is this meal one that you're eating here? Yep, that's my first meal. Um, that's typically, it's always eggs and oats. Okay. So the, the, uh, the combinations vary depending if I'm off season or prep, but it's, it's eggs and oats. That's what I've been doing for years now. Okay. And, uh, I see you got some supplements going here too. What, uh, what are you, what are you taking supplement wise? Uh, every morning before I eat, I have, uh, a teaspoon of Metamucil sugar-free. Okay. And three grams of beta alanine and three grams of taurine. And that's just something that I've done for a couple years now too. Do you take any other type of pre-workouts or is this your, your NO products that you're going to use and, uh, any, do you take any kind of other stims or anything like that with your training? Yeah, I, I cycle different pre-workouts. I'm not like loyal to one or one company. Right on. Um, if it's a, a good ingredient profile, I like to try it and yeah. see how I work with it. Um, but if it's a proprietary blend, I don't mess with it. <laughs> well, there's a lot of those out there. Yep. Um, so we, we get in the gym. You're uh, you're a member over here at Royal Oak Gym, which uh, you know we've all seen before on our Shelby video that we shot a while ago. Great facility, man. I, I can't speak highly enough of the place. And uh, it looks like you are starting out with uh, some pull downs, I believe. Yep. Um, I'm deadlifting today, so anytime I deadlift, I always start with a pull down movement to start to just to get blood in my back. Okay. So I'm thinking about contracting my back when I'm deadlifting or doing rack pulls, one of the two. So the rep scheme is three sets of eight to ten, drop the weight by ten percent, and try and hit your same amount of reps as the sets go up. Hmm. But so it's kind of like we talked about your your top weight is your first set, so it's not it's like a reverse pyramid because you're going down. Yeah. A lot of people don't. I think um, they don't understand that and it sounds like it would get easier as you progress but it doesn't it just i feel like it allows you to control the weight just a little bit more if you reduce it by 10 percent. and maybe that first rep or two might not feel quite as hard but anything after that man it, it gets it gets brutal doesn't it yeah definitely it's uh it's definitely a mental change up from what anybody's used to traditionally with working up to your top set but it does make sense to give it your all with your heaviest weight in your first set when you're most fresh. It's different. It's a different mindset. And this is a, a method that you've picked up. Uh, you've worked with uh, Jordan Peters for your training, correct? Yep. That's who uh, designed the workout that I'm doing today. Uh, I made a few modifications just based on where I was at okay. in my off season. But yep, Jordan, I worked with him for six months and got a couple training plans from him. Nice. So uh, where do you go after this? What are, what are we doing after your pull downs? Uh, we're heading over to the platform, and that's where I start deadlifting. Um, typically, everything's just a warm up up until my working set, and it's just to feel the weight in my in my hands and 
my body feel the weight. I don't have a set number of reps. I try and do as little work as possible to be safely warmed up, but I don't want to waste energy on warm ups. Yeah. Yeah, that makes total sense. So uh, how 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 long does this process take you to to get warmed up to your actual working working weight? Probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Okay. Um, I might do some foam rolling in between sets just on my glutes and my hips. Hmm. That's what's what I've learned is key for me is to make sure my hips are really open. That's what allows me to deadlift my highest numbers. So, Right on. So, I mean, I, I see you're, you're, you're working up here, and I think that – I think that the thing here that is really important to understand, and it's what you already mentioned, is that you're, you're warming up the, your body, you're warming up the muscles, but not only that, you're warming up your central nervous system so that you can prepare yourself to continue lifting these heavier weights. I know a lot of times that if I rush something and I go in the gym and I do that first set, let's say I get eight reps on it, if I wasn't totally warmed up when I come back to it the second time, I may do that second set and I could get 10 reps with it. And that tells me that I wasn't properly warmed up for the first set to begin with. And I think that, that that's really kind of what the key is here, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, you hit it on the head. I mean, it's uh, you don't want to leave reps on the table because you weren't ready, basically. Talk so about you have to uh, treat, treat every working set like it's your last because, I mean, it is pretty low volume. I'm only doing 10 to 12 working sets in this workout altogether. So. Okay. And, and tell me, I think this ties right in here. Talk about using the logbook because I know that you're a big fan of using a logbook, and I know that Jordan is a huge proponent of doing so. Yeah, uh, I started doing that with DC training over a year ago. Um, I still do it to this day. I, I will always do it. Um, that's your scorebook. That's that's the scoreboard. Bodybuilding isn't something that has a clear cut winner and loser, but if you can break it down to it's you versus you and your training and your nutrition and your cardio and your past prep versus this prep. I mean, if you're, you're beating what you did last week by even one rep, that's progressive overload. You've, you've set a new standard for what you are to achieve. So I think a logbook is vital, especially for adding size for, you know, younger people coming up. Sure. So you're either attempting to, to either add more weight or get more reps every time you perform that workout. Right. And I've learned through injury and just overall experience that, I mean, increasing reps is a way to progressive overload. So if you have a rep range and it's eight to 10 and you get eight reps with it, the next week you should try to get nine or 10. You shouldn't up the weight hmm. because to keep a progressive overload blast going as long as you can, yeah. you need small jumps are key so i've been caught trying to make too big a jumps because i thought i got an easy eight and then the next week it's like you you don't even get eight like yeah. you went up 10 pounds so yeah that makes total sense so i i see here that uh one of your sets on your deadlift you 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 attempted it but you didn't hit it uh i appreciate your honesty in including that set you know we we don't always we don't always reach the goals that we set for ourselves so what, what do you do when this happens? Yeah, I wanted to be transparent. Uh, <laughs> I don't have anything to hide. So and that's with progressive overload. Obviously, you write out your numbers before you go hit the session. You want to hit them, but it just doesn't always happen. Hmm. So uh, for that, I backed down. I went down to 455, which is was going to be my lighter set. Okay. But I did higher rep, and I just cranked that out for as many as I could. But that was actually able to show me because all things were equal for me at that point, meals, rest, um, recovery, that I, it was time for me to deload. Hmm. So after that workout is when I, you know, I cruised for a week. Okay. Right on, man. So I, I kind of put that in there too, is just a way to show you that if you don't hit your numbers, like you need to, and that's what keeping a logbook does. It's a way to control variables. So I was able to see that my body needed a break because you, you can't progressive overload forever. Yeah. So after this exercise, where do we go from here? Uh, seated cable row. Seated cable row. Okay. And that's a rest pause set. So with that, it's it's one shot. There's no three sets of 10. It's one attempt with a minimum of 10 reps on your first round. Okay. You know, 15 breaths. Go at it again. Get as many as you can. Typically, you'd like to see five or six. Yeah. 
cut your, your first number in half and then rest 15 breaths and then one last all out attempt to get as many reps as you can, which three to four. And so this is your only set, correct? I mean, this yep, is, this is it. That's it. Yeah. I think that, uh, you know, we, we keep coming back to this, but I think that when you can adapt this mindset, you look at your training totally differently, you know, because you're not, you're not going to get that second attempt, that third attempt. You're not going to come back and do four sets. And, and I feel like for me earlier on in my training, I could, um, I could, I could reach, uh, I could reach more fatigue through continuing to do more reps and more sets. But the, the better I've learned to train myself and the higher I've brought the intensity, the more I can get out of, you know, one set or two sets, something like this. Did you do any warm ups to get to this this working set or at this point were you already warmed up? I was fairly warm. I still did a couple warm ups, just maybe two or three reps, but just to feel the weight um, and to feel the movement actually and, you know, feel myself squeezing. Yeah. But, you know, my lats and everything on my back was neck to neck to lower back was feeling it. So right on. I, I was ready. Nice. So where do we go from here after these? From there, I don't have the video plan. I, I believe it was the uh, uh, dumbbell rows with okay, the, yep. Yep, the dual, dual arm dumbbell Dual arm rows. bent over row. Um, that was a newer one that I had never done until Jordan put it in a program. How do you like those? I, I feel that they're beneficial. Yeah. Uh, adding upper back thickness. And... At this point, it's it's quote unquote accessory work, but you're still using progressive overload. You're still trying to work up in weight and use your heaviest weight. But the rep set rep scheme was 12 to 15 reps for two sets, so that's considered higher rep work in most volume plans. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's it's cardio almost. It's it's exhausting. <laughs> I think being in that bent position and using both arms at once is. It's a very different exercise than when you're doing a single arm and you're bracing yourself, isn't it? Right. And then you're uh, you're more of a pronated grip, so mm. it's kind of hitting a little more rhomboid and yeah. mid-lower trap. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. I found that to be pretty tough, and I had to lower the weight a lot when I started doing that exercise. It is, like I said, man, totally different animal than that single arm and... And you are, you're pulling, you're pulling higher too. It's not like the single arm row where a lot of times you're keeping your elbow in tighter and you're pulling to that lower lat. You know, this is definitely more of that rhomboid type work. Right. And with two arms, I mean, there's nothing to brace it. So yeah, I feel like it's a lot more honest. You can't get as much body English into it. Sure. Sure. No question. So from here, you went into a, a deep stretch using the, uh, the pull down bar, uh, is a stretch something that you're using on a regular basis on these exercises and, and these workouts? Yeah, I use uh, every workout ends with a DC stretch for each muscle group that was trained. So that's mm. fascia, deep fascia stretching. Um, and if you're doing it right, which I've learned, it's it's just as painful as the exercises themselves. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I'm trying to hold it for 60 to 90 seconds. <laughs> and you, it's really a mental thing. Like you have to... I try to envision myself inside of the muscle and to feel it elongating as I'm stretching. Like, so for the, the hanging from the lat pull down, usually as soon as you feel that burn in your armpits is when most people let go. Right. So that, that's the point where you have to sink into it and let it pull. And I think it's honestly been one of the biggest things that's helped my width improve really? in doing those, those stretches. Do you feel like it's helped your recovery too? Oh, definitely. Because there's been periods where – if I was rushed at the gym or, you know, I just didn't have time, I might have blown off the stretch and it's, it's shown. So oh, no kidding. I think it, it makes sense to stretch a muscle best after you've just worked it and it's warm. Sure. So, so from here then after this, uh, it looks like you, you finish up the day with some rear delt work. You always, uh, do rear delts, uh, on your back day. Yep. Uh, usually rear delts with that and then front and side delts with a push workouts. Okay. So I don't give shoulders really any direct work. I feel they get pretty hammered just doing back and chest stuff. Yeah. Um, rear delts is something I I typically respond to really well. I have a pretty good mind muscle there. So I think that was a muscle round, uh, which, I mean, you're familiar with. Scott Stevenson promotes it, fortitude training, uh, six by four. Yeah. So it, it seems like it's easy until you get to like that fourth round or fifth round, and then it's, 
it hits. Yeah, those are brutal, man. There's there's no question about it. So this was uh, this was still in your your off, the end of your off season when when you recorded this video, correct? Yeah, I think that was just at the tail end. Okay. Prep might have been just around the corner. So. So what were you weighing here at this time about, if you recall? Uh, anywhere from two fifteen to two twenty. Okay, and, and where are you at today? Today I'm sitting at one ninety eight. Nice, nice. And so you'll be competing in light heavyweight at uh, Central States. How's how's the diet coming along? How are you looking? Um, right on track. You know, Bill's got eyes on me twice a week, and I'm able to see him at Royal Oak, and we have a really good relationship. I, I talk to him every day. He's nice. also prepping for Central States, so we are literally walking the walk together. It's, it's a lot of fun. Nice. Now, uh, he had mentioned you guys were going to get together to start doing some posing on the weekends or something. Have you started doing that yet? Um, not yet. He just started with Kenny Wallach posing today and okay. I, I have my first session tomorrow. So once Kenny, the master shows us what we need to do, uh, that's when we'll start practicing. Excellent, man. Well, I'll, uh, I'll look forward to that. And, uh, if we get the time, I'd love to get together with you guys and, uh, practice some posing. It'd be, it'd be a fun experience. And, uh, and I, I'm wishing both of you guys the, the best of luck at the contest because Central States is always a great show. It's been one of my personal favorites in Michigan. Right. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. And good luck to you. I know you got a show coming up. Same yeah, date. Same date. So. so, all right, guys, for Advice is Radio and Advice is Video, I'm Scott McNally. Tommy, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Scott. Uh, I'm an avid listener of Advice is Radio. Uh, I get a lot of my knowledge from them. So, if you're not listening, you should do yourself a favor. <laughs> if you want to learn and have a good time, listen to Advices. All right. We'll see you guys soon. 